blood just after having your level examination now looking forward what would be the next best alternative that you would have chosen in your life it's definitely as you have already into the stream of commerce the way of having management accountancy and future leadership in the corporate world there are ample of opportunities that you could have grabbed one of such best of the best opportunities is doing acca as your professional education partner so we online accounting dot lk being the highest quality educational institute in sri lanka for acca thought of giving you kind of an awareness in order to make you enriched with positive thoughts about the examination the objective of today's session is that all the young blood who have done a levels should have kind of a very good awareness about the professional education because we see most of the younger generation are not having kind of a good insight about their future they are going through so much of avenues without having kind of a you know solid objective at the end so we need you to be enriched with positive thoughts and insightful ideologies in order to make your final decision in a very informed manner yes as i told you you have to make these decisions in a very informed manner so just after your a o levels just after your a levels you should be able to have these all decisions in a very informed manner so that is the aim of having this session today so the best quality institute for acca in sri lanka online accounting.lk is partnering with you to have this insight and we will be looking forward to see you growing as young professionals which will lead the corporate arena in the near future so let me introduce myself first i'm going to be the moderator for today's session actually you will be meeting me once you come to online accounting.lk to do your acc examinations because i will be doing the financial accounting model for the knowledge level so you will definitely meet me and uh, it will be a kind of a good session for us as well to have kind of a familiarity or affiliation might be yeah that's about me okay today's session is designed to you to meet the best industry experts and professionals in order to get this insight so first of all let me see who are the panelists for today's discussion okay first we have mr jehan penin panayagam he is the ceo of informate and the vice president of john keels holdings plc next up we have mr namdika buddipala he is the chief financial officer of commercial bank of sri lanka next we have mr nabil lahir he is the manager kalambu west international terminal private limited we have ms prasadika jayasurya assistant manager kpmg australia and also we have ms jigme hetiarachi finance manager headlings enterprises united kingdom and we have ms dulanji dulanjali kodagod she is an associate consultant in ey sri lanka global services and finally we have mr hashan waduge the chief executive officer of online accounting.lk and joint managing partner of momentus okay having these panelists would be the best ever opportunity that you would have in this age because it's not that easy to see these professionals having a talk with these professional even being heard by these professionals so it's a very good opportunity for you okay as the first uh, thing approaching to today's session i would like to first talk about 
what is ACCA and what are the benefits of doing ACCA? I think the best personality in order to address this matter among these panelists will be Mr. Jehan. He is the CEO of Informate and the vice president of John Keels Holdings. And he will be the best personality to address this. Sir, actually, what is ACCA and what will be the benefit for a student to do ACCA? Thank you very much uh, indeed. And uh, thank you to Hashan and his team uh, for having me. I attended uh, one of your graduation ceremonies and I was hugely impressed with all that online accounting has achieved in a very, very difficult time, in a time of national crisis, of pandemic, and you have produced so many national and international award winners. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, so I, I have one more qualification to add about myself. I'm also an ACCA student. So I've gone through the exams I've got through and I've never regretted it. It's something that I've learned a lot from. So ACCA is a global accounting body. They are represented in 179 countries. There are over 200,000 members and over 500,000 students. So I've been to the ACCA office. It's it's a, a UK body. Uh, it's an exam that originated in the UK. So it's a UK accounting qualification, but it's a truly global one. And it is regarded as the biggest global accounting body. So some of the advantages of ACCA is that it uh, is it has name recognition across the world. So I've been in Australia and different parts of the world. Uh, and I've met uh, and I've been uh, very, very excited to meet fellow ACCAs. I remember one instance where uh, ACCA office here introduced me to the office uh, in Australia. And uh, through that connection, I met a fantastic consultant through which a lot of great work came into Sri Lanka. So the partnerships and the connections that you get are truly global. It also leads to many different parts. For instance, you can have a BSc with the affiliated Oxford Brookes University. There is after on completing, so you need to just, I think, submit a dissertation paper and you then uh, qualify for the BSc. Then you have a master's pathway. So through ACCA, you have many, many different routes and many affiliations. Recently, ACCA signed a truly groundbreaking MOU with CA Sri Lanka. I will be speaking on it with Mr. Sanjay Bandara in a few days time, talking more about this partnership. And what this does, it gives mutual recognition. So if you have completed ACCA and you have five years experience that you can apply for CA membership. There are also pathways, uh, affiliations with other accounting bodies, so it really gives you a very, very good connections and you have many different paths that you can pursue. The next is the value among employers. Now I operate a, a BPO, which comes under the John Keels group. And I've always found that our team leaders like to hire ACCAs because of the technical skill set as well as the soft skills uh, that ACCAs have. So it's a great, kickstart for your career journey. And ACCA syllabus always focuses on very practical insights into things like case studies, how you can handle business scenarios. So there are actual scenarios that you need to handle. And this is highly prized by employees. Finally, it has very up-to-date, very current knowledge, for instance, on things like robotics on ESG, which is becoming one of the hottest new topics, environmental, social governance. ACC is a career navigator with a range of uh, topics where you can enhance your skills. So if you're looking at moving in the audit line, or if you're looking at moving in the financial analytics line, it will advise you, the career navigator will advise you what skills you need to further develop to enhance your career. And there's a whole range of job opportunities which are also shared on the career navigator. Right, So uh, it's a great pathway to multiple education streams, great global network, fantastic way of enhancing your career and taking it to the next level. So I've really enjoyed the exams. I learned a lot, a lot acquired a lot of knowledge, made some great connections. Uh, 
uh, and I've never regretted being a part of this great global body. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, as you all know, as very correctly he explained that ACCA is going to be a very practical examination. So here in online accounting hotel care also, we have a very practical approach where you will be enriched to learn the theory first, have practice and trained for the examination. So that would be the best thing that we also have here. And thank you so much, sir, for your introduction about C ACCA. And uh, my dear friends, now here we have a CFO, one of the largest commercial banks in Sri Lanka. He is Mr. Uh, Namdika Buddhipala. You know, being a CFO of a commercial bank, one of the largest commercial banks is not a simple thing. So I would prefer to ask from uh, Mr. Buddhipala, how do you rate ACCA qualifications once you are recruiting a person to your organization? How our ACCA students will be benefited once they are being recruited by a large firm like yours? Thanks. Uh, first of all, I think I need to uh, thank, like uh, what uh, Jan has also mentioned. Uh, it is a pleasure to be uh, with you all. Uh, and uh, maybe when we look at uh, a bank like ours, uh, which is uh, the largest private bank in the country. And uh, there again, uh, we have uh, nearly 5,000 people uh, who are working with us as well. Uh, when it comes to maybe recruitment, uh, you need to really demonstrate what you really uh, maybe learn. But there again, how we are going to put it into practice. Uh, when it comes to uh, he has uh, Jan also already mentioned the fact that uh, when you when it comes to strategy level, uh, then uh, the the applicability of the practical solutions uh, are going to be extremely important. To somebody to uh, grapple with. Uh, most important element is going to be what you really learn uh, at ACCA, specifically at the strategy level. Uh, how we are going to convert that particular knowledge into practice uh, is extremely important. So I'm going. To, I'm not going to say that uh, somebody who's uh, really coming from various background, uh, then uh, uh, it does not mean just you can recruit somebody purely because of that particular qualification. So you need to go through some amount of uh, the transparency in the recruitment. So when it comes to that particular transparency, it's extremely important for you to demonstrate uh, what you really learn and how we are going to apply that, that particular knowledge uh, when it comes to problem solving. Uh, that particular backdrop, when you look at uh, maybe uh, case studies, as uh, Jan also mentioned, uh, you were given a very practical situation where you need to uh, associate with certain constraints and certain issues. So that, that particular, uh, the knowledge that you embark on is going to uh, really how we are going to convert it into uh, the, the practice. Uh, then that particular appreciation and that particular knowledge you need to demonstrate. Uh, naturally, you have a competitive edge uh, since it is very much practical. And there again, syllabus is uh, very much uh, novel. And uh, there again, uh, the, uh, the association that you have with so many people, uh, those are going to be enriched into the syllabus. Uh, I can remember uh, maybe some time back running into uh, certain uh, the uh, roundtable discussions in deciding uh, how the syllabus is going to be enriched. Now, when it comes to that kind of roundtables, uh, maybe over 100 countries are going to contribute. Uh, that particular uh, international aspect we are, we are trying to maybe emulate something which is uh, the models which are very much prevalent and very much proved in the world. Uh, then uh, this kind of collaboration with so many people uh, getting involved in uh, maybe enhancing the syllabus is going to be extremely helpful. So 
uh, when you uh, come for a discussion, when you sit down for an interview, it's always uh, up to you to kind of demonstrate what you learn. Because getting through the exam uh, is maybe when it comes to come to SEC slightly different. Where you need to have that, that practical approach. Uh, without having that particular practical approach, it's going to be difficult for you to get through the exam. By going through that particular path, it's going to be extremely important. I can remember maybe about 15 years back, uh, maybe 20, 25 years back, maybe 20 years back, at a young, young age, uh, I recruit one person who's having uh, not only ACC qualification, but other qualifications also. Uh, who helped me in very much in the technical uh, side of it, uh, who migrated out maybe about 15 years or 20 years back. He was there with me maybe a couple of years, then he migrated to UK. It's absolutely doing well, uh, having a conversation as we speak also. Uh, now, the, the importance is even his ability to move out longer. And like nowadays, we are trying very much to move, move out. I'm not uh, advocating for you to move out. Still, you can find opportunities here as well. But there again, this particular, uh, not only the qualification, but uh, at the time when you uh, maybe interview through uh, whatever the mechanism, uh, the, the way that you approach it. Uh, and then thereafter, when you uh, go somewhere and when you work that particular place, the approach that you, you can demonstrate through uh, the uh, kind of uh, the experience, kind of uh, the, the thing that you uh, get out from the uh, passing through exam is going to be extremely important. Uh, sorry, I haven't given a very, very straightforward answer, but uh, your ability to demonstrate uh, this capability of tackling the question and grappling with it and getting out of it uh, at the time of uh, making interview, we have, I have seen personally the ability, ability of ACC uh, graduates ACCA members uh, have been much more uh, advanced than maybe uh, compared to any other discipline coming from various other disciplines as well. I just will stop at that point. Uh, maybe can take on uh, maybe other questions uh, slowly later. Thank you. As you uh, already know that uh, ACCA is having so much of a good approach on the soft skills and everything. So as uh, Mr. Buddhipala mentioned that if you are doing ACCA, your soft skills will anyways be improved. So then it will be very easy for you to be recruited by a well-established organization. Thank you, sir. Okay, now I move into Mr. Uh, Nabil. He has already worked with so much of uh, colleagues who are now working out of Sri Lanka, who are working abroad. Because I just saw the uh, comment box also, chat box also, most of our uh, spectators are asking about this. Seriously, is ACCA a global passport? Mr. Nabil, Mr. Nabil, what do you think of this? Hi, Supun. Uh, first of all, thank you, Hashar and the team. Supun, can you hear me? Am I audible? Can you confirm that, please? Yes, yes, we can. We can hear Nabil. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so once again, thank you, Hashan. Thank you, Supun, uh, for giving me this platform to speak about a qualification that I'm really passionate about. And, and I think you asked a very relevant question, Supun. You asked a very relevant question in front of a crowd that has to make a very important decision because you're, you're in a very interesting stage. You're just after A-levels. You're trying to figure out what you want to do next. You know, you need to decide on a qualification to pursue, which is all great. But I think you asked a very relevant question, Supun in terms of is ACCA a global passport, right? And short answer, it definitely is. A ACCA is definitely a global passport because it's one of the most globally accredited qualifications, right? As you know, ACCA is a qualification from the UK, right? And it's very recognized across the world and people have very high regard for ACCA uh, qualified individuals, right? Uh, if I have to give you, uh, a simple example, right? I have a lot of friends uh, who recently uh, migrated and also took a step to go and experience uh, what it's like to work abroad and live abroad. And, and I can say very easily that my friends, my fellow colleagues who pursued ACCA found it very difficult to make that step, right? Because 
ACC in some countries are also recognized as completing a four years degree. You know, that's the level of uh, recognition that's given, right? So I had a lot of my friends who travel to various countries, not, not very, you know, biased towards a particular set of countries, but like a wide array of countries. You know, you're talking about the Middle East, you know, people uh, take steps to go to the Middle East because you can save a lot of money, right? And, and the lifestyle is pretty good too. And then you have people who, who take, you know, the, the step of migration where they permanently look to move out to another country where they looked at countries like Australia, Canada, UK, very easy, right? And, and my friends and my colleagues easily found jobs through ACCA. And why, the question is, why is ACCA global passport? It, it's because the content, right? The content that you study is world-class, right? It's world-class, right? And if you really go through the syllabus, you know, people have this perception that ACCA is very accounting oriented, you know, accounting oriented. Now, that's a thing of the past, right? Because the role of an accountant is to not only know accounting, but it's, but he, he or she is also supposed to contribute to strategy, you know, and also management uh, and, and so many other things. And that is what ACCA has understood in the past. And they've made their curriculum in such a way that by the end of the qualification, you've touched on almost all topics relevant to do well in any company, right? And, and that's what I thought was one of the best things about ACCA, right? Because to be honest, even I've gotten a lot of offers to go abroad and, and I've got to say ACCA because I'm, I'm a member now, I'm an FCCA. That really sets me apart compared to the other candidates because ACCA is not an easy exam, right? So people really value the effort that you put to pass ACCA, right? And that's valued across the world because ACCA has touched upon many countries. There are so many, you know, uh, memora mem uh, memorandum of uh, corporations or memorandum of understanding signed with other countries, right? And they sort of embody it with their local chartered or local accounting qualifications. And so, uh, Supun, to answer your question very simply, you know, like I said, uh, my colleagues, my friends have found it very easy, right? They found it very easy to get jobs abroad. And, and what they've told me, their feedback was whatever they learned in ACCA was very relevant to the jobs they do. And this is not just one field, not just accounting, you know, not just a finance manager or an accountant. This is from people who are working in corporate finance, in investment banks, right? And, and wider into management, okay? So, so ACCA, Supun, to answer your question, definitely, is an international passport. And, and for anyone looking to go abroad or you know, looking at a future abroad, trust me, ACCA will definitely give you, give you a very good platform to succeed in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nabil. It's a very insightful answer, by the way, because uh, now you know that ACCA is definitely a global passport, but I think it's better if we get that the same answer from a person who is already working outside of Sri Lanka. So that is why I thought of getting an insight from Ms. Prasadika, who is now working in KPMG Australia. I think she will be the best person to answer this question, whether ACCA is recognized internationally and whether you are able to get an overseas job by doing ACCA. Ms. Prasadika, over to you. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Harshan and the team for having me. So I think you all can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, perfect. So actually, um, before touching about the recognition that's the office is in Australia, I think it's better for you to get an understanding about the job market here in Australia, because with that, you will be able to understand as to why you need to have a professional qualification, especially a qualification, a globally recognized qualification like ACCA. So um, if I tell you about a bit of background about the job market, during last few years in 2020 and 2021, here the borders were closed and there were no any skilled migrants or international students came in. With that, now, there are a lot of job opportunities available and there's a greater demand for accountants and auditors. So 
that's the opportunity side. But at the same time, the job market is really, really competitive because now the borders are open. And because of that, there are a lot of international students who are coming in to do their masters or bachelors. And some of these students I ended up having their bachelors or masters from well-recognized universities in Australia, like Deakin or Latrell, like those universities. And with their qualifications, they finally ended up in the same job market like as we are in. At the same time, since the borders are open now, there are a lot of skilled migrants also who are coming into the country with different qualifications in accounting and finance and also having different experience from different countries. So that's this sort of job market here. Yes, there are plenty of opportunities available, but at the same time, the market is really, really competitive. So in such an environment, if we need to secure a job, we need to have right qualifications and the right experience. So that's what I have seen so far. And that's where this professional qualification came in to come into the role and add value to yourself because to secure a job we need to show the recruiter or the employer that we can add more value to their organization when comparing to others who are having a master or a degree so um, and the other thing is if you look at the job advertisements in australia like you can look linkedin or there are some web searching sites like seek or indeed if you check those you would see more than 99 percent of the job advertisements always ask for professional qualification it could be ca sec or cpa they always ask for professional qualification even for entry-level jobs like um, bookkeeper or uh, accounts receivable or payable officer you would see still they ask for professional qualification it might not be the full qualification but even for those entry-level jobs they're looking for people who have at least started their professional qualification so that's the sort of demand that's there for professional qualifications in australia and um, I think in such an environment, if you have a professional qualification like ACCA, that really adds value to you. And also it's not only a qualification that's recognized in UK or Sri Lanka, or Australia, it's kind of a global recognized qualification. And if you have that qualification, and as Nabil said, like wherever you go, the recruiters or the employers know that you have that right technical skill set which required to perform the job. And if I tell you about my experience, when I also came here as an international student and soon after I completed my master's, I started looking for jobs and I ended up having several job opportunities and the job interviews. And during those interviews, what I realized was like, um, I was able to outperform or show the employers that I can add more value to the organization through my qualifications that I have. And also um, recently that a lot of uh, friends of mine who migrated to Australia and what I have seen is like those who have professional qualifications were able to secure jobs within a very short period of time without waiting for ages with that qualification that they have so I think that will give you sort of understanding as to why having a professional qualification is so important at this stage and also why you need to have such a global recognized professional qualification. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. That is about the Australian recognition. So let us move on to, I think uh, most of you are waiting to know whether European countries are recruiting uh, personnel who have done ACCA, who have uh, outstanding, who have been outstanding in ACCA qualification. So we have uh, Miss Jitmi, she went to UK, and got a job in uh, UK very easily because she is qualified in ACCA. So I'm very happy to ask from Ms. Jitmi how this ACCA qualification is recognized in European countries. Hi everyone. I hope I am audible and visible too. Yes, Jitmi, we can hear you and see you. Okay, okay. Thank, I must thank uh, Hashan and the team for inviting me for this uh, opportunity to discuss uh, how important ACCA is uh, when it comes to landing a job or as a as a thing which is really um, important for someone to add to their profile. So um, ACCA 
uh, is a qualification, of course, from the UK and uh, now which is recognized globally. So there's no doubt that uh, the ACCA qualification is well recognized among the employers of uh, the UK. But I would say uh, there are multiple um, professional qualifications which are recognized in the UK industry like AAT UK, CIMA UK, ICAW, everything is there. Uh, but I would like to say, above everything, this qualification uh, would enable someone to land a job easily because having this qualification in my profile, uh, soon after I came to UK, I applied to number of opportunities in the UK, like finance manager, finance financial controller, accountant, senior accountant. And when we when I read through the entire the, the job description and the job role and the qualifications required by the employers, most of them had requested none other than ACCA. So as a person who exposed to the commercial or the em employment in the UK, I would say this uh, qualification is um, recognized by the UK employers more than anything. So of course, the EU country is the same because a lot of my friends who have migrated to EU countries they are they, maybe they are having CA or different other qualifications, but nothing is um, acceptable in those countries than ACCA. Whatever the qualification they have, on top of that, they had to add ACCA as a qualification because that gives the exemptions to the uh, the other professional qualifications. Like um, let, let, let's say, for example, in Luxembourg, they have the prof professional accountancy body in Luxembourg. So uh, they give the exemptions for ACCA, as I know. So um, this opportunity of uh, having the ACCA qualification as a member of ACCA, as a proud member of ACCA, I think it would give you the path for a different uh, avenues, not only to become finance manager, financial controller, but to like Nabil said, uh, and like uh, Mr. Jahan said, uh, different um, uh, different um, uh, I would say tax like financial analyst, investment fund managers, like uh, so many qualification, uh, so many um, job jobs are attracted by uh, this um, um, this qualification. And uh, as uh, Mr. Nandika said. There's an advantage for us uh, uh, during the interviews, even when I was interviewed by different employers, I had that competitive uh, advantage, I would say. I have I had that uh, the edge which I could be selected uh, above the other, other applicants. So that uh, was given to me by the ACCA qualification because it adds only not only the technical um, uh, abilities to you, but also the ability to have the commercial awareness to present yourself to the others. So all these um, set of skills were given to me uh, by this ACC qualification. So I would recommend this um, qualification for anyone who, who, who would love to be in the finance sector or the, uh, I, I would say in the finance, finance and accounting uh, field. This is kind of a kind of a qualification that you must add to your profile. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Kitmi. So that is about ACC as a global recognition. So now I'm moving forward uh, for another important thing. That is, uh, how do you specify yourself after doing ACCA? So we have Ms. Dulanjali with us. She is a very recently qualified person. She qualified ACCA very recently. So I'm very happy to hear from her. How are you satisfied about your decision that you made a few years back to do ACCA? How do you feel right now? How satisfied you are with your decision to do ACCA? Hi, everyone. Uh, so it was actually the best decision that I have ever taken. Uh, I'm not trying to hyperbolize it, but I see ACCA as something which guided me to grab many opportunities. Uh, so I will explain why I say so in different aspects. Um, if I were to explain to you how it affected me professionally, uh, so as soon as I completed my exams, my salary was doubled. Uh, I was able to cover the total cost that I incurred to do all my exams within a couple of months if I took it financially. 
uh, and I know how it opened the gate to numerous opportunities all around the world and the reputation it gave me to introduce myself as an ACCA is immense. Uh, if I took it technically, the subject content is to a very next level and the study texts have been prepared in such a logical manner. So I would recommend ACCA to any student who is dreaming of becoming an aspiring financial professional. Uh, so believe me, the journey is hard, but the journey is always worth it. So the answer to your question is a big yes. I'm truly satisfied. Definitely. Thank you so much for your feedback. So now uh, I'm moving forward to Mr. Hashan Baduge. As you all know, Mr. Hashan is being in the industry of having these educational matters on most of the professional qualifications. So he know he knows really well about all the professional qualifications that have been there in Sri Lanka for a while. So what I'm asking about uh, ACCA from you is, sir, now we all know, even Mr. Jehan informed you, doing ACCA, you will be able to grab the bachelor's degree of Oxford Brookes University. So Mr. Hashan, how do you see this? What kind of a benefit is this for the students who are doing ACCA? Right. So thank you. Thank you, Sukun. So uh, actually now, if I just uh, elaborate, uh, so we have started doing uh, chartered double AD CMA at online accounting dot LK. And uh, later we started ACCA. I, I think we have started last year. So the reason why actually we have started ACCA also because of one, uh, one of the reasons is this. The reason is now if you compare some of the other professional qualification, uh, there is an issue. There is an issue for students who are maybe not going for government universities after A levels. So they need to pursue a degree as well. So when we were evaluating, and when actually when we got a request from ACC Sri Lanka, when we were evaluating the academic qualifications, so we saw there is a possibility for ACCA students, even before they are done with their uh, ACCA full qualification, once you are done with level two, skills level, which means after you are done with nine subjects, plus once you submit the thesis, you will be able to get the degree from the Oxford Brooks. Then actually we have even analyzed. So Oxford Brooks is kind of like uh, 500 to 600 ranked university in the world. And uh, it's a well, very well reputed in, uh, university as well. So uh, what we thought was, so we could uh, uh, avoid that the time wasting period for students if they are choosing the ACCA. So in parallel, once they are getting the professional qualification, they will be able to get the Oxford Brooks. And just for your information now, since I know that this question will be asking in the question, so I have chosen some of the around four members who I worked when I was there in KPMG. Uh, I was a trainee at that time. So I just went through their LinkedIn profiles, right? So this is one of the, one of my known person. I think Jitmi also know, uh, knows him. He qualified at the age of 19, right? ACCA. So I think he got the membership around 2021. Now he went to New Zealand. Now he's the manager. Now he's also having that Oxford Brooks University's degree and he qualified ACCA a few years ago, but he later got the degree because he had, he completed the skills level plus the, plus then after that he uh, submitted the thesis. Then I selected some other members as well, uh, Kaushika. So uh, now she is there in KPMG Luxembourg. Ijaz, uh, he is there in Canada and Ashwin, he is also there in KPMG Luxembourg. So I went, went through their LinkedIn profile. So what I have noted, they have completed ACCA. So after that, from that directly, they uh, achieved that uh, Oxford Brooks University. So uh, what is what is uh, uh, more important more in this qualification is that you don't need to waste your time again to pursue a degree. Sometime maybe you have to attend weekends, maybe first two years university without training and all. 
So once you are done with your professional qualifications, when you are done with the skills level, and once you submit the thesis, so after that you will be able to get the Oxford Brooks BSc Applied Accounting degree. So that's all about the degree Supun. So I hope I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Very well answered because I think you got few proofs also because then you will be very clear on the path that you are going to approach right now. Okay. Now I'm uh, again moving uh, to Mr. Jehan because now I think you already know that having a, an ACCA membership is not something that you do just after completing examinations. You have to have a practical training as well. Mr. Jehan is the CEO, uh, CEO of Informate and also he is the vice president of John Keels Holdings. These two are also accredited training institutions of ACCA. So what my question to you, sir, is how this training parallelly with the ACCA qualification would benefit a student who is doing ACCA uh, right now, how this training would benefit to him for his uh, professional journey? Sure. So <clears throat> I think over the, <clears throat> the recent years, it has become much more competitive when you see younger and younger people getting into the work stream and at a young age holding on to uh, uh, acquiring very good titles. <clears throat> So whilst I don't think there is a, you need to pressure yourself, I think uh, working whilst you're studying does give an advantage. It helps your exams as well, because I believe examiners love it when you talk of practical situations in your case studies, in your essays, uh, when you, in your long answers, when you talk about, you know, this happened in my organization. This is where I saw resistance to change. When you bring in topics like that uh, and examples, it really helps you with your exams. It really helps you to contextualize your studies, put your theory into practice and see how it works in the work realm. So I think it helps both things. It helps your career, fast track your career, uh, not lose time. It also helps you parallelly with your exams. Uh, and also when it comes to getting membership, right? So now we have a program called the Finance Apprentice Program where we are recruiting people from 18 upwards or 18, 19 upwards. And potentially by 21, they can be fully qualified and have three years experience and apply for membership. So they are in a very, very good space at a young age. And then they are in a position to really apply for, you know, fairly mid-level positions, assistant accountant, accountant in other John Keels group companies, or even within Informate, go up the ranks. We have uh, senior associates, team leaders uh, from amongst this group of people. Uh, and also the skills that you learn in the organization. Now, we as a training, uh, training is approved employer. We focus on a lot of future skills, robotic process automation, lean, Six Sigma, Power BI, data analytics, SAP. So these are all key skills that really make your CV much more powerful, much more impactful. You are really securing some world-class methodologies and technologies into your CV. So I think all of it works well together. Of course, you need to be disciplined. Right? You, it's not going to be easy to work and study and get through your exams, uh, but it can be done. We have seen students who do it. Sometimes they do a degree plus ACCA plus work and they get through it all. So it can be done. It just needs discipline. You need to do your daily work. <clears throat> so as I think one of the speakers said, I remember I quote my former boss, Ronnie Pires, who was John Keel's finance director and also an ACCA. He wrote a book called Tough Journey, Great Destination. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Now, uh, what is important here is in doing ACCA, you have to have this practical training while you're having your studies. You might think this is a difficult thing to do, but actually not. We have encountered the fact that most of the students who just completed A-levels are seriously focusing on their studies, but not about the industry exposure. But they, the, at the end of the day, they will be stagnated at the same point because the knowledge should work in a practical environment. So that is why I'm asking from Mr. Duddipala because he is having this industry exposure as always. How do you see that, uh, especially for these youngsters who have just completed A-levels, 
how beneficial it is to have this training while they are having their studies right now? How do you answer this question, sir? Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir, very much uh, for the for the kind of very practical question, uh, super new hours. I think it is better for, for me to be to open up and say what happened to me, uh, maybe. Uh, I also did uh, maybe uh, ACC a bit later, but uh, I did the uh, charter uh, local. And uh, then thereafter, at the time I was at the university, then I didn't want to kind of uh, go through the practical trade. So uh, finally, after getting qualified also, I was at the uni because the university, you know, the instructions are there pretty much. And then you need to kind of stay there until you get, you uh, pass through uh, with those delay kind of uh, issues. Then uh, finally, like uh, Hashan, I also doing, joined KPMG. When you joined KPMG, you had to join as a trainee. First, you have a degree with a class and then you have uh, charted also. Then finally, what happened to you? You had to kind of go through this particular training also. KPMG is an extremely nice place. There's no need for me to mention Ashano very well. Uh, so because of that, uh, I didn't find any, any kind of uh, deviation there. But probably if I had gone through that particular the practical training during the time when I was doing the exam, which I could have done. Uh, not, a, not a kind of thing that most of my colleagues have done because when we got out of the university those days, there were about 13 uh, accountants who got qualified and about more than 20 uh, other professional bodies uh, the, the people who got through so my my uh, practical advice is that the experience which i went through don't go through well you cannot really because of the uh, passing through the exams maybe with flying colors doesn't allow you to get into the jobs immediately after the next day of uh, passing out the, my experience, I'm just so uh, the with the KPMG, of course, I have gone through a very nice time. I was in Oman also, they seconded me to Oman as well. I was in Maldives as well and had a lot of experience. That is, uh, but it is very, very important for you to get that particular practical aspect. And maybe uh, one of the other very important thing, uh, which uh, may be outside the question also, uh, uh, Sukun, I think it's better for me to mention the fact that uh, I even started uh, ACCA uh, after middle of my career. At that time, I had maybe two pro the uh, uh, two maybe other professional qualifications, including chartered, first degree and two masters. But still, I thought for me to kind of, kind of continue this. Uh, then uh, the the important aspect is that uh, then finally uh, when I started uh, ACCA, then so many other things with a huge amount of work also. Uh, then what happened? Uh, the, the exemptions came later on. At that time when I registered, no exceptions, only the four subjects. I had to do 10. Then what I thought, okay, now I'm in the middle of my career, maybe more than 30, 35 years. Uh, so I opted to do the exam rather than getting exceptions because that knowledge was extremely important to me. Then the, the secondary as aspect is that uh, I, I, I saw a lot of uh, the young girls and boys like Tulanjali, Jitmi, uh, Prasadika, uh, Nabil, Ola, very, very young. It's extremely nice to have this particular interaction with uh, you all. And uh, Hashan, uh, thanks very much for you to uh, give, uh, give me the opportunity to have this particular interaction. Uh, even my daughter, what happened, uh, she wanted to do uh, the first degree in economics. Uh, she went to uh, Sheffield, UK, and she did the degree. Uh, then I said, I was able to kind of make up her mind, not only economics, you did economics plus finance. So she was agreeable, she did that, she came up with first class. Then immediately I put her into uh, the, uh, another university to do master's. Uh, then uh, the, the, what happened? Uh, she wanted to do economics again. I said, I was able to change her mind. Then I was I wanted her to do. Uh, finance. Then she did finance and uh, masters came up with uh, merit and she came back here. Then from that those days also I was trying to convince her that you need to do ACC. I was the president uh, maybe way back in 2008 also. Then I was the president uh, just before uh, 
uh, the uh, the jihad as well. So I couldn't convince her. Sometimes you know uh, the the young girls and boys. It's okay for for them to convince. It's not that easy. Finally, what happened? She decided to do by her own. Uh, last time she became a prize winner, uh, also. But finally, I mean, sometimes you need to listen to experienced people. It can be father or uncle or somebody else as well. Maybe somebody who uh, who has that particular experience. So coming back to this particular practical side of it, uh, whenever she uh, came down here for her vacations, uh, she did a uh, kind of uh, short time internships with KPMG, EY. C.T. Smith, so many places she wanted to do where she 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 had that particular understanding about the importance. Even though that time she didn't start even ACC. So for uh, for for her also there were exemptions minimal. Uh, that because uh, her specialization is in finance and economics, but she took that particular thing and went ahead. But uh, her, her approach was different to me. Because she wanted to have that particular practical exposure even during her holiday year. So normally, uh, you know, uh, for universities, we have this uh, the particular uh, three year, uh, three months kind of uh, vacation. So each and every vacation, she came down here and she did some practical. Thing. So look at my my uh, my story where I had to after getting a class from a university as well as then having something uh, that else. A professional qualification for me to uh, start as a uh, the trainee or whatever for me to get that. Don't get into that. Uh, you can do it while you are doing uh, the the uh, exams. Definitely, that will some, sometimes add value to you as well. Because sometimes some of these things are very practical. That when we come to ACC exams, unlike maybe other exams, your practical exposure is going to help you for you to get the exam. So uh, I will stop at that point since I've taken a bit, bit more time. Uh, so uh, that's what I, I have to share with specifically uh, the younger, the, the crowd that uh, you will uh, introduce to this particular platform to have a discussion. Thanks. Thank you so much. It's very authentic uh, when it is coming with your own personal experience, I think that is very close then, then uh, students will also get a good understanding how important it is to have this training uh, while you're having your education. Okay, now uh, I'm going to a very uh, practical question because now every one of you are going to do an exam. So what is the kind of a, uh, the first question that would come to your mind is, is this an easy exam or a difficult exam? I think there's a very good personality to answer this question because uh, Mr. Labil, is uh, one of the prize winners of ACCA and he's currently lecturing in online accounting.lk. Once you come to me to do financial accounting in the first stage, he will be the next one to do the financial reporting in the skills uh, level. He's a prize winner in ACCA and he looks very young also. I think you looked him. So how do you think is ACCA an easy exam or difficult exam? How can a student manage this exam? Nabil, over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Subud. I think you gave a very, very nice introduction. Call me very young. Thank you. I think Mr. Budipala also called me very young. Trust me, uh, guys, I think uh, you, you all need to also appreciate this session because you all are listening from some of the industry stalwarts, right? Mr. Nandik Budipala is a very famous name. Uh, and Mr. Jehan as well. You know, amazing intellects, amazing people giving you advice about how you should, you know, pursue your. Uh, next steps. So I think this is this is a great forum. Um, again, Supun, uh, I think the focus should not be on what's easy and what's difficult, right? I think that's that's not how we should look at it, because th there is no exam that's easy. There is nothing that's easy, right? Nothing comes easy. You you have to work hard, right? And 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 as long as you really enjoy, you know what you're learning. You know, I mean, it's a very cliche thing to say, you know, do you really enjoy it? But trust me, I think seeking knowledge has to be enjoyable, right? Because I think that's, that's what's left to do, right? You, you need to learn, you need to seek knowledge, you need to understand the world and, and you need to choose your path, right? And if this is the path you want to follow, don't worry about easy, difficult, because 
as long as you study your content well, as long as you do the past papers, and as long as you continuously look to improve on your current knowledge base, you're not going to find this difficult at all, right? It's going to be very easy because it will challenge you for sure, but challenges are what really make you because you need to push yourself and you need to start challenging the status quo, right? You need to start challenging your mind and you need to push yourself to understand all these things. And, and trust me, you know, once, once you follow the right teacher, right? And once you uh, follow the right material, which is, which is what we do even here at online accounting, even at financial reporting, right? The subject that I teach, I try to make it very practical, right? And, and very uh, relevant and appropriate uh, to our current day-to-day uh, -day lives, right? So we do past papers. Yeah, we take you through the content. We are always reachable. We have Telegram groups and you can reach out to our lecturers uh, personally as well and ask questions and get clarifications, right? And, and we do take you all through the platform, ACCA's new platform. If, if you look at the platform used by ACCA, it's very practical, okay? Because when you move on to the corporate world, you realize you use a lot of softwares, you know, very commonly softwares like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, mostly like Word and Excel, right? And ACCA's exam platform looks to sort of mirror, you know, the platforms that you find in your day-to-day -day life. You know, you do accounting sums using Excel-like platform and Word-like platform. So it, it's very relevant and it's very practical and it's very exciting, right? So don't think, like I said earlier, don't think about easy or difficult because you don't want to do something easy, right? Don't do something easy. You know, that's, that's my opinion right now. You know, that, that's not what you should be looking for. You know, do the difficult thing. You know, if you think accounting finance challenges you, then that is what you have to do, right? Because through challenges, right, you discover, right? It's a voyage of discovery is, is what we call it. Because you learn about yourself, you learn about the subject, and you really get excited the moment you understand a concept and the moment you acquire new knowledge. Because when you, when you acquire new knowledge, that is when you're developing, that is when you're growing. Because you should not stagnate, you should not stick to the easy things. Because these easy things won't show you or won't teach you what it's like you know, to, to uh, solve problems, right? what it's like to, uh, to break down complicated solutions into simple steps, because all of this is done through ACCA, right? And trust me, if you have the commitment and you have the interest to learn, you know, ACC is gonna be a breeze for you. And don't worry, at Online Accounting, if you do decide to join us, you know, we will make, uh, we'll make the subject very easy to understand and we'll make it as interactive as possible and ensure that you leave with all the knowledge required to really succeed in your careers. Okay, I, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Accept the difficulty, please. Uh, tackle the monotony and status quo, then will be, it is the best thing that you could have done. So thank you so much for that thought, Nabil. And I think as he very correctly explained, in onlineaccounting.lk, we are having full syllabus covered before few months to the exam, and we are having past papers, revision sessions, examination focused uh, sessions, and then you will be enriched with knowledge to be tested in the exam, so it will not be a difficult thing to you to manage at the end of the day. Okay, now uh, I'm moving forward to Ms. Prasadika. As you all are having this uh, concern on going uh, abroad, I think uh, it's again uh, better if we are having kind of a summary what is the best step that we have to do in order to uh, go abroad? What is the best pathway to go abroad? Ms. Prasadika, I like to have a kind of a summary because everyone is waiting to uh, hear for this question always. What is the best path, best path to go abroad? Yeah, thanks, Sufun. I think it's kind of a very uh, good question at this stage because I also get in so many messages from people who are in Sri Lanka ask him what's the best option, like what sort of options are available if they want to migrate to another country. So um, actually, if you, I'm talking about the Australian context. So if you're planning to move to Australia, there are a number of opportunities or options available, but out of those, there are like three common means. Uh, one is you can be here on student visa, but I think at the current economic situation, with the current economic situation in the country, it's a bit hard. 
because now um, the requirements here are a bit, a bit tough for Sri Lanka. And the second option, you can apply for direct PR. So if you are a skilled migrant, there's an opportunity for you to apply for direct permanent re residency. But again, um, we never know how long it will take for you to get the visa. And on the other hand, you need to have a particular level of points for you to uh, be considered. Um, and the third option is one of the very common option nowadays, which is you uh, can be here on work visa. So for that, the first thing you need to find the employer here or a job opportunity here, and then employer uh, should sponsor you for your visa. If that's the case, I think it's the most easiest, fastest, and um, the most cost effective way for you to be here in Australia because why I said it's cost effective because most of the cases that employer will um, take care of the entire visa process and also they pay for your visa and sometimes your air tickets and accommodation at least for first couple of weeks as well. And usually those visas like work visas are processed within two to three weeks. So it's the fastest option. And um, if I look at the trends here now, I have seen like a lot of big four firms are willing to sponsor um, white candidates. So if you have big four experience in Sri Lanka, the big four firms here are always prefer to sponsor those candidates and um, take them on work visa to Australia. So that I have seen recently and also like um, I'm working in KPMG Melbourne office. So during the last seven to eight months, there were around 20 Sri Lankans who joined. Uh, to KPMG Melbourne office on work visa and that's only one office but I have said like I have heard that's the case in other KPMG offices as well in other states and it's the case for most of the big four firms here so therefore um, I think to answer your question um, that's the easiest option like if you have right qualifications and experience and if you can convince the employer that you're the right choice they do not hesitate to sponsor you and take you on work visa. And after that, like it's usually for like two to three years, the work visa. And then of course you can apply for direct PR. So yeah, that's the best option. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Prasadika. A very clear understanding, I guess. I think you understood how uh, easy it is to go abroad if you are having the right qualification with the right experience with you. Okay, now I'm going to uh, have something from Miss so Bonnie. Actually, I so can Bonnie, see. Excuse me, and and uh, now, uh, I, as I know, Prasadika joined from Australia. Now I think her time would be like uh, one or two a.m. I think so. Better we allow her to leave the meeting because uh, she said. Yes, I will definitely participate because we need to definitely advise to the young crowd. So that's the reason why she participated to this, even though uh, her time is like early morning, right? So thank you very much, Prasadika, for uh, participating. So we really appreciate your thoughts here. Thanks, Ashram. Yeah, actually, it's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> thank you so much for having me and sure. to giving me the opportunity to be on the panel. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you. We really appreciate your commitment towards a better younger generation. Thank you so much for your commitment. Okay, uh, now I'm going to uh, move forward to Ms. Jitmi again. Actually, I can see there are certain questions from our spectators. We will allow the questions once we are done with uh, this initial session. Okay, uh, Ms. Jitmi, actually, uh, I personally know that uh, even students or even professionals are thinking in a very much focused way on what would be the salary scale that will be offered to a person who is qualified in ACCA, especially in European countries. So I'm very happy to uh, hear from you as you have the exposure, you are just working there. What would be the salary scale that will be offered to a beginner as well as an experienced professional in uh, European countries? Yes, Supun. Um, if we talk about the European countries now, you know, the UK is out of the European Union with the Brexit. So I would just split this into two. Uh, how would be the salary scale in the UK and how would be the salary scale in the EU countries? 
So, um, yeah, if we talk about the EU countries, the salary for the qualified ACC accountant would be somewhere around 42,000, starting from 42,000 euros, um, and it can go up to um, maybe 50, 60,000, depending on the number of years of experience that you have uh, post-qualified. So, in fact, this is around 1.3 million uh, LKR with the exchange rate right now uh, per annum. So, uh, uh, they have a huge, uh, huge demand and huge value um, uh, as the professional um, accountants in the EU countries. Um, when it comes to UK, uh, since I am in the UK, I have better uh, understanding how the UK market works uh, in relation to the professional accountants, there is a huge shortage in the market due to the Brexit. The labor, the labor, in fact, the professionals have, uh, who are from the EU countries have moved out from uh, UK due to the Brexit. And there's a shortage for the accountants. When I search for the jobs, there are number of jo jobs, plenty of jobs in the UK um, market for the finance professionals. They are the beginner with the three or four years experience um, uh, and with the ACCA qualification, who is just, I think, becoming a new member, would start maybe from 27,000 to 30,000, and it can go up to 45,000 even with the professional experience that he or she has. And for the for the person like who's having five to six, seven years experience, the market gives you something around forty-five thousand uh, pounds to seventy thousand pounds for the for the positions like finance manager, finance controller, senior accountant, etc. That is for the per annum uh, because the, here the salaries are quoted per annum, uh, and if you take the the monthly salary in LKR, it would be around one point six million to even two point five million per um, uh, month. In fact, so. Um, due to the shortage in the skills in these countries you know like uh, i want to especially tell that people in these countries they do not go for many of them do not go for the professional qualifications they uh, people especially the british people i would say in this country they live with some basic nvq level qualifications i would say and they are very surprised to see the profiles like acc qualified ca qualified a person with bachelor's degree, master's degree, they are really delighted and they are surprised to see the see such qualified person. So, of course, when you add a qualification like AZCA that enrich your profile in a way where you draw a huge salary in terms of financials and um, you uh, draw a huge recognition, they, they recognize you because you have done a qualification which is globally recognized but while being in Sri Lanka. That is the fact that they consider that all the employers in the UK, they really appreciate the fact that we are qualified. We are being Sri Lankans while staying in Sri Lanka. We are being qualified as professional accountants with their qualification. They value a lot. So uh, to give the answer, it would be around 30,000 to 70,000. It's a big range because the number of years that you get as a professional accountant, your salary goes up. Um, which is really, really exciting. So that's how the market behaves uh, in the UK and EU countries. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jitmi. I think it's very interesting to put forward the fact again, repeatedly, because it's like 1.3 million rupees per month if you are having uh, the uh, exposure and the uh, qualification. So that is why it says yes. that you have to have your qualifications along with the practical experience. That is what gains you at the best. Okay, thank you so much for that understanding because that's very important for these youngsters because everyone is looking forward for the salary at the end of the day. So I think that is very important for everyone to get that insight from a person who's actually working there right now. Okay, uh, now I'm uh, willing to go forward to Ms. Dulanjali again because uh, even I'm these days uh, having this, uh, you know, that understanding that in Sri Lankan context, we have to manage several things at the same time because I'm also having my uh, degree in a government university, University of Sri Jawardhanapura. I think Ms. Dulanjali also had the same uh, background. She did the degree, 
She did ACCA, she had the practical training, and the, at the end of the day, now she has reached this far. How difficult it was to manage all of these things at the same time. And finally, how do you see your progress? What is the recommendation that you can give to these youngsters on managing these certain difficult tasks at the same time? I think you're the best person to answer this question. Uh, yeah, Supun. I'm a first class degree holder from University of Sri Zavadhanapura, Department of Accounting. Um, uh, the degree that I followed totally supported me in following all these professional qualifications and vice versa. So I started my training during the third and fourth year in my university. Uh, and at the same time, two years of training is a requirement in my degree too. So I was able to cover two years out of three while I'm in the university itself. Uh, then uh, we had lectures at night and, you know, going to all those lectures at night, doing the final year research and attending to classes and covering training as a full-time employee was totally a roller coaster in my life. Um, but I believe all you need is a little bit of passion in whatever you are doing. And uh, not to forget, there was a very supportive circle around me and I've met some great bosses and mentors throughout my career who supported me to achieve all this. Um, so I have some advice to all these youngsters, as you said. Um, if you are a student just after finishing your A-levels, I would rather recommend you to start your training soon. Uh, I didn't do that actually because after levels was kind of a cooling period for me. Um, but I would suggest to you all to start your training as soon as possible. Uh, so if you are planning to enter into a university, you'll be able to complete one year of training by that time. So, and the best thing is CA counts your training period in number of months, not number of years. So they have made our life easy by doing so. Um, and the next thing is uh, covering all your classes. I mean, the lessons, covering the whole syllabus content is a must. Then only you'll be comfortable in facing the exam confidently. Of course, you'll have to work smart, I would say, rather than working hard so that you'll be able to achieve all your goals. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dulanjali. As you very uh, specifically mentioned, uh, once you are trapped with so much of things to do, it will be the passion inside of you which will lead you to get to the best outcome at the end of the day. And especially if you are having these degrees, if you are having the research, if you are having the lectures and everything, I think online learning will be the only solution because you will be able to uh, access the information, access the knowledge, access the lectures at the convenient time where you can allocate your time in a very efficient manner. I don't think that physical uh, lecturing would benefit in this purpose. Okay, I think uh, there is another concern that I want to uh, highlight here because uh, there are several professional qualifications that uh, in Sri Lanka we can gain, especially when it comes to international qualifications, students are having always the uh, comparison between CIMA and ACCA because both these are very good qualifications but have their own inherent uh, advantages and disadvantages, maybe, I don't know. But I think Hashan sir is the best person to describe what are the differences between ACCA and CIMA, because both these qualifications are international qualifications. Then you will be able to get a good understanding and differentiate these two uh, when you have a good uh, comparison between these two. Sir, over to you. Right. So thank you, Subun. And I also wanted to add some uh, points uh, with regard to the previous question as well. Now, I have, I had done A-levels in 2012. And uh, at that time, actually, no one was interested in going for training. But I, I did uh, charter. So after A-levels, I went to training. So I just encourage you also. Now, doesn't matter whether you are going to attend for a university based on your A-level results, government university or not. I would say you also better start your training right now because if you are going for a government university now i also got selected for the japura accounting department and before i'm going to japura accounting i completed one year training 
so from the third year onwards i had to again uh, attend training so uh, at the end of the 24 uh, after i'm um, 24 years so i completed the professional qualification the degree and three years experience so if i wouldn't have gone to the university maybe i would have done that thing 22 years so now if you are not going for training now so which means it will be 25 so one year is very important so i just encourage you all uh, right doesn't matter you do the acc or not even please uh, start training because that's that's really important because to get whatever the qualification ca acca cima you need three years of experience now i will come to that compa comparison so this is basically we had to put this uh, question uh, i discuss it so nasal because most of the students are asking so if the most of the students are asking or asking then we have to tell so then this is not a put down to any qualification we just compare with whatever the facts we have whatever the analysis we have so basically if you take the these two years internationally recognized uh, i will start with the cost right so even i have done analysis few days ago i think last week so the around the cost the total cost to finish of acca if you assume the gbp rate is around 450 right if you search the GBP rate, you have to put some stamp duty cost as well when you are paying. So around 450. So let's say you have to spend around 1.1 million for ACC qualification with the class fee, assuming the class fee would be around 250,000, right? So, and if you take that into the CIMA, it will be around 1.6 million, assuming the class fees would be around 300,000 for like all three years three uh, uh, all, all three years yes and uh, maybe a student will ask so why why it is high because why ACC is having 13 subjects where CIM is having 16 subjects so if you have 30, 16 subjects in ACC maybe uh, you will reach the same cost as it so that's a uh, one difference and ACC is having 13 subjects even if you compare with the chartered chartered also having 16 subjects CIM may also having 16 subjects so ACC is having less subjects but it doesn't it doesn't mean that uh, that is not covering the syllabus because i'm having the idea about the syllabus of all these curriculums i'm a management accounting financial financial management lecturer so if you take the uh, the the with the ca whatever whatever that is in the acca syllabus also they are in this ac uh, ca because sometimes when i'm teaching for ca as well i'm using some of the acca past papers questions as well so uh, that's the one difference. So and also make sure CA and ACC qualifications, both of these qualifications, mainly focusing on uh, not one aspect. So there is a one wrong idea in the heads of uh, students. Uh, okay, ACC only is kind of accounting uh, qualification. Uh, chartered also is kind of a accounting qualification. But if you if you see the curriculum in ACCA. You have 13 subjects. Out of 13 subjects, only three are financial accounting and the financial reporting related subjects. But if you say, uh, looking at the management accounting pillar, so in the first level, you have a management accounting subject. The second level, you have a performance management subject as well as financial management. So financial management, management accounting is kind of a similar subject. So there are two subjects in the second level. And the final level, you have optional subjects. You have to do two out of the four. So you can either select APM, Advanced Performance Management, and the Advanced Financial Management. So sometimes maybe you will end up with five subjects in management accounting. So it means you cannot specify ACC as an accounting qualification or a management accounting qualification, or else there are some other like business and technologies, strategic business leaders. So there are a strategic management aspect as well, kind of auditing, taxation. So I would rate, right, as, a, as my personal opinion, I would rate ACC is kind of a like all rounding qualification. But if you go for the CIMA, yes, CIMA, they normally promote, they normally tell to the student this is as a management accounting qualification that also having some other the financial accounting aspect as well. But I would rather say uh, CIMA is kind of a focused management accounting qualification. Maybe let's say I have seen many CIMA qualified people are there in manufacturing organizations like. Uh, garments like uh, MAs, Brandix, uh, Hydra Money. So what I what I'm seeing. So I think maybe there is a good demand for that particular industries, right? Why? Because that is more focused on that. 
but it doesn't mean that acc is not focusing on management account i would say acc is more focusing on management account even rather than financial account so uh, if you just see the differences i would categorize acc as a all rounding qualification where management cima is also there are some other other categories but not the auditing i think not the uh other, other categories but maybe management accounting like management business managing business organizations and all some of the financial accounting subjects so uh and basically uh, if you get uh, get about this uh, degree degree path i would say there is a, a benefit from acca if you compare with any other professional qualification even i'm a chartered accountant i will be getting the acc membership soon as well but anyway i would also say uh, that's a very good that's a very good uh, opportunity for students to get the degree so basically uh, and and also for the world recognition point of view i don't i don't think the number of countries which is spread at acc icma there is a different but uh, when i when i really ask from uh, my friends right what what is their opinion i just ask from let's say australia canada uk there are uh, some of my friends who are there i ask machan how about the recognition for like ca how about the recognition for acc how about the recognition for cima so what they normally tell is the name the two names that is coming up is acc and ca so they tell there is a high demand for these two qualifications in our countries so basically if you go for australia there is a high recognition for chartered uh, acca and their qualifications australian cpa uh, chartered accountants in australia and new zealand and all and also uh, if you take the european countries right you can know so very high recognition for acca so what i what i hear is uh, once you go let's say once you see the last 5 years 10 years i think there is a huge growth in acca maybe maybe i would say uh, with this mutual agreement with the chartered once you are a chartered member you will be getting the acc membership after 5 years once you get the acc membership you will be getting the chartered membership in 5 years i would say that's kind of a equal equalization right so maybe not in the sri lanka but outside the uh, sri lanka so i would i would say so those are the differences so uh, if you want to select acca don't select acca because you love accounting and don't uh, uh, i mean don't go away from acca since you need to go for an management accounting qualification because acca will fulfill your financial accounting management accounting auditing strategic management taxation or whatever the aspect you need so basically that's that's about a basic comparison uh, right Okay uh, thank you so much sir for that uh, 